All right. Good morning. Good morning, families. Good morning, students. Very nice to see so many people on the meeting this morning. We are all here for our blended learning return to school family engagement meeting. I welcome everyone once again. I'm joined this morning by our school business manager, Ms. Jiggets. She will be assisting with letting our participants in as well as answering questions throughout the session via the chat. We do have quite a bit to cover this morning and I'm excited to be with you. This is our 2020-2021 academic school year. It is our year of transformation. So welcome again to all of our students. Welcome again to all of our families. First, allow me to thank you for finding the time and spending time this morning with us. It is important that you be here, you hear the latest information from me, as well as our school community. As it says at the bottom, we are a family and your partnership with us is just as important as our partnership with you. It is reciprocal, it goes both ways. So thank you everyone for being on this call this morning or this Zoom meet as we are. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Just to review some protocol, so this session is being recorded to allow those who cannot be here this morning with us uh, the ability to share and see this information at a later time. This recording will be made public. It will go to our public website as well as all of our social media platforms within one business day. Please keep your mute, your mics on mute, rather, excuse me. Feel free to also turn your cameras off. If you have called in this morning, press star six to mute yourself. If you have questions and comments throughout, we will have a number of Q&A sessions. So please type your questions in the chat and they will be answered by Ms. Jiggets or myself live throughout the presentation. It is also important to note that this recorded presentation, all of the slides and all of the links that we include in the presentation will be emailed to everyone immediately following the presentation. So feel free to take your notes, but everything that I'm presenting this morning that you see on my screen, you will get a copy of it as well. So our agenda, we are going to start this year right. We'll start with that. We'll discuss health and safety measures. We'll look at our fall 2020 return to school programming model. We're gonna look at sample student uh, schedules. We're gonna look at blended learning expectations and the instructional models that support that. We'll set up our New York City schools and student accounts. And then there are some next steps for our families and students to partake in so that we can together start right this fall. And then we'll end with an important announcement. So as I began to say, we are in this together. If we are going to start this fall right, we have to all be on the same page and we have to support everyone. Everyone's safety and well-being is always our top priority. We all know that this will be a school year unlike any other in history. School, the in-school environment will certainly feel extremely different. And those of us who are electing to learn online, that experience will also be different. But we have a collective love for our Chelsea CTE community. We are one, we are together. And that will require us to all be flexible because changes are inevitable. They may occur on a weekly basis, they may occur on a monthly basis, but changes will be happening. We also need everyone to be adaptable. So the changes that will occur, we have to adapt to them and maintain our resiliency. We have all had the ability to withstand these changes and make the necessary adjustments since March, and we have to all continue in that vein as we prepare to enter September with the 2020-2021 school year. And lastly, I'm asking for everyone's patience and understanding. 
I need you all to have a lot of patience and a lot of understanding because we all are learning. Some of these things are new to the educational community. I know a lot of it is new for our students and families and we all don't have all the answers, but together we will make this happen. Together we will be successful. Together we will do this as one Chelsea CTE community. Part of the work in starting right, for September, we've all had a summer vacation. Our students rather have had a summer break and some of them were engaged in our remote summer sessions as well. But for September, we're going to start the year off with interdisciplinary projects across all content areas. So across all subjects, so ELA, math, science, CTE, et cetera. And what that means is that we're starting the school year off a little bit slower, right? So we're doing social emotional learning pieces where we're providing emotional support to our students, families, and faculty and staff by also engaging in trauma-informed instructional strategies. And that simply means that we are not going to dig deep into content right off bat because we recognize that this, this traumatic experience is still with us and we do not know for, for how long it will last. So we're being very cognizant of that and making adjustments to our September start. That work will also include in the projects time for students to get acclimated to our learning platforms. And one major change is Zoom. So all of you are in our Zoom meeting today, but all of our students engaged in Google Meets last semester. We are transitioning away from Google Meets and we are using the secure DOE version of Zoom. Also along to that line, we have to create our New York City DOE student and schools accounts. Many of our families have already started the process of uh, creating your schools accounts. But our students, we also need you to create your New York City DOE student account so that you get access to your DOE email address, which will then allow you access to the secure version of Zoom. And lastly, we will provide time for our students to learn how to better organize their Chelsea email. Uh, as we all experienced last semester, many of our emails were bombarded by the Google Classroom notifications and invites, et cetera. And so we missed some of the pertinent emails from whether it be school leadership or your teachers, guidance counselors, et cetera. So we wanna make sure that we have time to engage with the social emotional aspects, the academics, getting acclimated to our school learning platforms and organizing your email. And of important note, all the academic classes, all the subject classes, our tutoring, our PM school for after school counseling, occupational therapy services, and extracurricular activities will all be available online, whether you elect to do in-person blended learning or remote. More on all of that as we proceed through. So let's get started with health and safety. As I said before, the health and safety of our students and staff are of utmost priority. The guidance that we see here has been developed collaboratively by the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, as well as the Health and Hospitals Corporation. There are four key tenets of this plan. We have to promote behaviors that reduce spread. We have to maintain healthy environments. We have to maintain healthy operations as well as protocols for preparing when someone gets sick. So take a moment, just look at the slide, and then I'll go into further detail on each tenant in a moment. And so looking at promoting behaviors that reduce spread, those who would like to do in-person learning, we will definitely have to practice physical distancing. So all individuals in the school buildings should remain and must remain at least six feet apart. 
Second to that, we all must wear a face coverings. They will be required inside all school buildings. The Department of Ed is procuring and providing PPE for students and staff for use inside of our school building. Another aspect of is keeping our hands clean. So regular hand washing opportunities will be made available, of course, but we will also have hand sanitizing stations in the hallways on both the second and third floors and the first floor of our building. In signage and floor markings, we will have to move in different directions, use only specific entry exits, entry and exit stairwells. And so the signage that will be on the floors and on the walls, we wanna make sure that we follow those directions to ensure we reduce any potential spread. Second to that, we want to maintain a healthy environment in our school. So some changes that the school building will undergo. Offices, we're not at a place right now where they need to be converted to learning spaces, but if they do, then that is something that we will do. But as of today, we don't have to do that. In terms of an isolation room, if anyone presents, whether it's a staff member or a student, with possible symptoms of COVID-19, we will be having a designated isolation room where that person can be seen by the school nurse and contact can be made with families of either the student or the staff member at question and they will be uh, taken care of accordingly. Cleaning and disinfection protocols will be strongly implemented with our school custodial staff so we will be, they will be cleaning and disinfecting all surfaces at the end of the day. Any shared materials such as uh, rulers and calculators that we don't have enough to give each student their own, students will be asked to briefly wipe that down after their use. But again, that's until we can procure individual items for all students. We are in that process now, but that is something that we will have in place to ensure that we maintain the healthy environment. Food services will also be extremely different this year. Our students are used to enjoying their meals in the cafeteria and or outside of the school building. Uh, we will not have in and outside of lunch this year and all of our meals will be had in classrooms. And what that looks like, it's just a grab and go. So for students in the morning, when they arrive to school, if they'd like to have a breakfast that will be made available upon entry, you would take that breakfast directly to the classroom that you're assigned and eat it there. Same thing with lunch designated times throughout the midday. We will have grab and go meals where students can go down to pick up their grab and go meal and come back to the classroom and have it in the classroom. In terms of maintaining our healthy operations, so school staff as well as students are asked to get tested for COVID-19 one week before the start of in-person instruction. Families can call 311 to uh, ascertain what sites are closest to your respective neighborhood or your address and testing is free. So it is strongly recommended, it is not required, but it is strongly recommended approximately one week before school starts that everyone just get tested to be sure that you are negative. And lastly, around health and safety, we need to prepare for when someone gets sick. So the first ideal is that if you are not feeling well, please stay home. That is one of the best ways to reduce the possible spread. If there is a situation where we have symptoms or positive cases in a school, we do have specific protocols for when there's one confirmed case, two or more confirmed cases, et cetera. So in, in detail, when we look at if there's one confirmed case because students will be in one classroom, then the test and trace core will do their respective investigations. And based upon what they find, that classroom, as well as any teachers who have been in that classroom, might be asked to quarantine for up to 14 days. If the spread is across more than one classroom, then schools, the entire school building, will close for at least 14 days for deep cleaning and test and trace core follow up. We'll pause here for any questions around health and safety.
Again, Ms. Jiggets is answering the questions in the chat. Thank you once again, Ms. Jiggets. I think everything has answered so far. I'll wait just a moment more to see if anyone else has any questions in the chat. So in terms of going to get lunch, it will be staggered. So it all depends on the number of students in the building at that time. And again, the building is uh, occupied by two schools, Chelsea CTE and the iSchool. But we're going to stagger that so that students are not um, running into each other. And we're gonna have a system where uh, students can pick up a number of lunches in a, in a clear plastic bag and then just distribute it in the classroom for those who'd like it. So those protocols will ensure that students are not interacting with each other and they're not possibly spreading anything. So um, that will be a staggered lunch system across the classrooms. Students are not required to get tested, but it is strongly recommended. Someone's asking, will students undergo COVID testing? So the school do, will not do that process, but the New York City Test and Trace Corps and the Health and Hospitals Corporation around the city have free COVID testing around the city. And it is a strong recommendation that students do so before entering school. Uh, Juana Flores, your question will be answered throughout the presentation, so hold tight. Rosa, your question as well. So again, it's not recommended for students or staff, it's not required for students or staff to undergo COVID-19 testing, but it is strongly recommended. Carla, your, your question will be answered momentarily in the presentation. So let's proceed through. Excellent questions, by the way. So when we review the programming models, this is our fourth town hall of the summer. And so we looked at model one, two, and three. And as a collective, based on all the feedback that we got from family, students, and our faculty and staff, either model one or model three were the preferred choices. And so when we look at model one, that meant that we could hold approximately 50% of our student population. Currently, we're at 493 students. When we looked at model three, that meant that we can accommodate 75% of our students who we like to come to in-person learning. The first model was a set two days where students would come in on those set two days with an alternating Monday. The third model or model three had where it's a six day rotation where students are coming in either back to back two days or one day and then skipping two days in between. When we look at what we had to consider back when we were uh, trying to decide which option we would choose, we didn't have the direct numbers. So as of today, we have 72% of our families or 322 students have opted for in-person or blended instruction. 28% of our families or 172 students opted for remote learning online full time. The other piece to this is that staffing accommodations to work from home. We knew that staff would be uh, putting in those accommodations, but now we know 40% of our staff will be working from home this fall. We also have to ensure that we have so safe social distancing in the building and across classrooms. So we can accommodate approximately seven to no more than nine students per classroom. We also have to ensure that we have student supports for both online and in-person learning. With all of those things being said, the programming model that we had to go with was model 3A. And so allow me to dig a little deeper into what that model looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. So again, the rationale, it accommodates all in-person families ensure safety measures can be implemented with fidelity and safely across our building. It provides regular in-person support for those students who elected the in-person option. It accounts for the staffing accommodations I discussed. And it also supports the instructional models we will be implementing to prepare all of our students for career and college readiness. Here in Technical Education High School, we are preparing our students for career and college. So let's, let's take a deep dive. 
When we look at model 3A, this is a six day rotation. So again, we can accommodate three in-person groups of students where we have the one full-time remote group as well. And it follows a pattern. So if I'm in whichever group, there are three groups, group A, group B, and group C. And looking at the image on your screen, group A students are categorized by yellow, group B are blue, and group C are green. So if I'm in uh, any of those groups, taking a look at the lower left-hand side of your screen, so you see we have three groups of students consisting of 108 students each to accommodate that number previously shared 322 or 24. And then we have a group that's fully online represented in a pinkish tone color at the bottom where we have 172 students. And again, that's as of today, these numbers might change. So each group follows a three week rotation pattern and we will be providing all each individual group their specific days as aligned to the DOE calendar as soon as that's released. But let's dig a little bit deeper. So if I'm in group A, I'm a student in group A, again, I'm one day in class at Chelsea CTE, then I'm doing two days at home with online learning. For example, at week one, I'm in school on a Monday, and then I have Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm at home engaging in online learning content. Then I come back to school on Thursday, and then again, I'm at home for two consecutive days. Again, I come back the second week on a Tuesday, Again, I'm at home for two days after that. Then I come back to school on Friday, again, two days after that. So it all follows a pattern. One day in school, two days at home. One day in school, two days at home. That's the six day rotation every three weeks. And if you look at all the yellow, so you can plan for a student who's in group A to be in the school building approximately five times within a three week time frame. Again, a group B student, so same kind of deal. I'm starting my school day on a Tuesday, for example. One day in class at Chelsea CT, two days at home. Then again, that Friday I'm coming in for that one day. I'm following up next week, I'm at two days at home. Again, following that pattern, one day in school for Wednesday, two days at home. It continues in that same pattern for all three groups. So it's three separate groups that are coming into school one day for in-person, two days for online learning. I'm gonna pause here for just a moment, just check on the chat. So Janice Ortiz, students do not get to choose which group they're going to be in. We will be assigning that. Rosa, how do they know what group? I should ask the, I should say the questions out loud. I apologize. So Janice asked, did the students get to choose which group they're going to be in? No, students do not get to choose which group they're going to be in. We choose that for them. The idea is that unfortunately students cannot choose. If they have the option of choosing, they will choose the groups by which their friends are in. And in this current environment, we cannot have students um, choosing situations where they're going to want to talk and converse and have a good time. We can't have that. We are doing in person. We want to make sure that first and foremost, everyone is safe. So we are assigning the groups based on grades and based on the alphabet. So it's a random selection, but students do not have a say in that grouping. Uh, another question is how do they know what group they're going to be in? We will provide that information by the end of the month in terms of specifically what group they're going to be in. Jocelyn asked, so after the third week, it starts all over again, rotating back to week run one, correct. Oh, Ms. Jacobs already answered that. Great, thank you. And I did explain how the groups are going to be selected. Excellent questions, everyone. Keep them going. Thank you, Ms. Jacobs, for supporting that. Thank you, families and students, for your questions. So vocabulary review, right, asynchronous learning is when teachers create learning experiences for students to work at their own pace online and take time to absorb the content at home. So asynchronous learning is self-paced. It is an independent piece of work. And this is where students will go into Google Classroom to engage with lesson content on their own. 
Synchronous learning is when teacher and students meet online in real time through video conferencing or live chatting. And so for our purposes, we will be using DOE Zoom this year. Let's take a look at a visual on what that means. So take a moment to look at that. Synchronous learning, again, learning that happens in real time, you, your classmates, and your teacher in the same place and space at the same time. In this regard, it will be Zoom meetings. It's also an engaged classroom where you have active discussions, immediate feedback, and real-time interactions. Engagement can happen online, just like it does in face-to-face -face environments. We are choosing Zoom because it does allow quite a bit of flexibility, so we can all be in the same space at one time, like we all are at this moment. And I could also do breakout rooms, so similar to when you're in a classroom where you have smaller groups of three or four students, we can also make that happen in Zoom meetings online. A dynamic learning experience. So engagement creates a more dynamic experience. You can get to deeper levels of understanding through questions and answers, discussion and conversation. And then of course, instructional support. So again, you have access to teachers on a regular basis. You can ask questions mid-lesson, get support while you are in the process of learning. So that's the synchronous learning and it's really like that live instruction just online. The asynchronous learning, again, is learning that happens on your schedule. So again, our teachers provide materials and resources and assignments that students work on within a flexible time frame. Again, it is self-paced, so it might look like pre-recorded teacher videos, which you're going to see a lot of this year, self-guided learning modules, accessible notes, and also discussion boards. Again, it does provide a flexible experience in that learning can take place just about anywhere, anyhow, anytime. You access the materials and complete them on your own schedule. And finally, instructional support. So you have access to teachers for support, but it might not be instantaneous. So they're not going to be there live with you, but you can send an email or leave a message and your teacher will get back to you. And we have systems and protocols in place that are going to support that. And I'll get to that in just a few moments. So let's take a look at those students who opted to do in-person uh, learning. This will be broken up into Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and then Tuesday, Thursday. So first, let's take a look at what Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays looks like at the actual school building. So this is the synchronous learning with live teaching during the school day. So we're encouraging our students, for those who are coming to in-person, to leave your homes at least by 7.30. If it takes you at least an hour to get to school, you want to give yourself that buffer. If it takes a little longer, then leave a little bit earlier. But the first period will begin at 8.45. All periods are 45 minutes in length. The school day runs from 8.45 to 2 p.m. As I said earlier, breakfast and lunch are served in the classroom. Students must remain in the same classroom all day. The only people who are leaving the classroom are the subject area teachers. Students have an eight period program that includes one period for lunch, but they will engage in all of the seven scheduled courses for the semester. And because lunch is in the classroom, that will become what we're calling a lunch and learn. So you look at the top end of that graphic where it shows the periods, first period, second period, and the time frames. Under that in yellow, you see the live instructional lessons component. And so this is where if a student is in person, then from 8.45 to 9.10 or 25 minutes of each class period, the first 25 minutes, students will engage with live synchronous learning with their teachers. Going back to that 40% accommodation, some subject teachers that offer students content will not be in person in the school building. So what we had to design is opportunities where students who are either in person or remote have access to their content teachers. So some days you might have a teacher, let's say I'm Mr. Reed and I'm teaching graphic design. First period, okay, you have me first period, but second period, you're with uh, Mr. Teacher X 
and that teacher is working from home. So the teacher is not in front of you in the building because they have an accommodation. However, you're logging into Zoom and you're going to have the first 25 minutes of instruction with that teacher live. And this happens every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday across all of your classrooms. So again, with students being in person, you will have teachers in front of you live, but they might not be all the time your subject area teacher because that teacher might have a staffing accommodation. So take that in. That's Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, our synchronous learning days with live teaching, whether that teacher is live in front of you or that teacher is live on Zoom. And that take place the first 25 minutes of each class period. Now let's take a look at Tuesdays and Thursdays for students who are in person. These are our asynchronous learning days with synchronous supports. So what does that mean? So again, my school day is still 845 to 2 o'clock. I am engaging with my laptop, right? We're asking all students to bring their device, whether that's a laptop or a tablet, with you to school. And so you would have time throughout the day. You're going to have that still, those in-person supports where teachers are in the building. But it's very important to note that not all subject teachers will be in person due to the accommodations. But this is a space where you have an adult in the classroom, you have a teacher in the classroom for support. So you're still going to have that support and you're engaging in online content at your pace. So you're logging into Google Classroom, you're completing those assignments, you might have a question or two so that in-person instructor in front of you can support that. But in the event that they can't, what do we have in place? So at two o'clock, you're gonna exit the school building and head home. Every Tuesday and Thursday, you're going to have grade level academic support. So if I'm a new ninth grader and I'm confused in my English class on something that I was doing on a Tuesday or a Thursday, by the time I get home, let's say it takes me an hour to get home, I can log back into Zoom for the ninth grade academic support and ask my ninth uh, grade teachers questions about anything that I was confused about. So even on our asynchronous learning days where students are learning independently, they still have that academic support from three to five where their teachers are going to be available to provide those supports for them. So to review, both this blended learning schedule for in-person as well as those students who are remote on Mondays, our Wellness Wednesdays and Fridays, we all engage in synchronous learning periods where we have those live days of instruction. So each period, each class period has the first 25 minutes of live instruction. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, our asynchronous learning days where you have grade level academic support after school. So these are the days where students are learning independently, but again, that's during the quote unquote normal school day, but after school, right, quote unquote, they, they have that live support with their grade level teachers. Let me just take a moment to check in on the chat. So Shinda's question is, if you have another child doing in-person as well, are your students able to change their groups to sync with their siblings? And if so, how can you change that? So Shinda, I need a little bit more information. I'm assuming uh, the student is going to a different school. If that school is using our same model, we might be able to do that. You can email me directly uh, with that concern. I have to look into that. The models are the same. But if our model is not going to change. We are 3A. So if it doesn't align with the other child's model, that might be a challenge. Rosa is asking, when the students have on remote classes, the teachers are going to give face-to-face -face live or Google Classroom in general? So yes, teachers are going to give face-to-face -face live via 
Zoom meetings, all of our learning content is being held in Google Classroom. But when we're providing that live, quote unquote, face-to-face -face instruction, that is going to be done via Zoom, the same platform that we're all in now. Jocelyn is asking, are we getting all these instructions by email? Yes, you're getting the PowerPoint and you'll get all the links immediately after this presentation. Thomas is asking, will there be a live session scheduled for those who choose 100 remote learning? I'm gonna get into that. Thomas, your schedules are available and it's the same kind of schedule, but I'll get into that in just a moment. So, Beku Boge is asking, what material will be given to students to not get confused with this new learning model? Will each student be reminded all the time? So these are good questions and we're maintaining uh, as much normalcy as possible in our school program. And I'm gonna to get to that in a moment. But in scheduler, you'll see the normal school schedule. You're gonna see the setup online. You're gonna see the class schedule and everything. So it's kind of the same way we did it kind of when, when we were not in COVID-19 but just with a, an online schedule with breaks in between. Kayla Santana, should students bring their personal devices on the first day? No, not on the first day. We should start with that on the, the, the full, first full week. So we're tentatively scheduled to start September 10th. That is a Thursday. So for those first two days, we want to make sure that everyone's on board, everyone understands the safety measures, the safety protocols and such. So we don't want you to bring your personal devices on day one. Zane, the schedules. So Zane is asking when will schedules be sent out through Pupil Path? You should be able to see that today, Zane. We just sent it out yesterday. Okay, Josiah, I'm gonna answer this last question and I'm gonna move on. Will the college office still be open and what times can we get to help for our college applications? Excellent questions. The college office will still be open online and the times will be posted accordingly. I don't have those times yet, but we do have very flexible times. We'll have both during the school day times as well as late afternoon, evening times. All right, so this is for the students who are online at home. And you'll notice that it looks very similar to the in-person schedule as well. So again, same kind of deal, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we're doing the synchronous learning where you have the live instruction for the first 25 minutes of each class period. So these students are at home and we're giving them a sample schedule to maintain their regular school day routine. So we want students to have a consistent sleep schedule. And again, we are preparing them to be career ready. And so most of us are, are as professionals are working remotely from home now. And so we have to make sure that our students have that same self-regulation to wake up at the same time every day, engage in their learning structures and keep a normal schedule as best as they can. So with that, the student follows an eight period program, right? If you're at home, you have your seven classes and one lunch. The mandatory live sessions are 25 minutes long for each of your class periods. But of course you have 20 minute breaks in between so that you're not on your computer for an entire school day, right? 8.45 to 2.25, you're not gonna be sitting in front of your computer all day, you will have those live sessions with your teachers for the first 25 minutes of each class period with 20 minute breaks in between. And whenever your lunch is scheduled, usually fourth or fifth period, you take that entire time off, right? You take that break, that 45 minute break for yourselves. Again, this is Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. This is the days which you cannot miss the live learning. We wanna check in with you. We wanna provide those academic supports. And this is where you're following the normal school kind of day schedule as closely as possible. This is where we, we don't have as much flexibility, but on Tuesdays and Thursdays with the asynchronous learning, right? Again, I'm encouraging us all to keep that Monday through Friday schedule. So go to bed by nine o'clock each night. Yes, I said nine o'clock so that you get a very good night's rest. You wake up at 8 a.m., you rise and shine early. You know, I'm always about early is on time. On time is late and late is unacceptable. You rise at 8 o'clock, you have a nice breakfast, and you log into your computer. Now, this is where you have flexibility. 
So you can engage with the Google Classroom content on your own, right? You might wanna take 40 minutes to engage in an assignment and take an hour break, or you might wanna work straight through. Whatever your schedule allows, then you do that on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But as you're engaging with the Google Classroom content, you might have a question or two. You might be confused about something. So you write a note and then you plan to attend between three and five, right? We're gonna post those schedules of when the grade level teachers are available. And so from three to five, every Tuesday and Thursday, you can check in with your teachers to ask those clarifying questions. So in essence, we have live supports for students Monday through Friday, when you think about it, because Monday Wellness Wednesdays and Fridays, they have the live teaching 25 minutes of each class period. But on Tuesdays and Thursdays, while we don't have the 25 minutes, the mandatory 25 minutes, we do have the after school academic supports in place. Let's take another look at the chat. So Linda's asking, will the students, will the, with, with the live, will we see the teacher in the class, like the students in the classroom at 930? So if the teacher of record for that content is an in-person teacher, that person is also logging into Zoom during that time period and you will see them. So the students who are in person, everyone during the live sessions on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays are logging into their computers with their individual headphones. Everyone will have their own headphones assigned, or you can bring your own. And for the first 25 minutes of each class period on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we're all logging into Zoom. So whether that's students, or the teacher of record in that in-person classroom. If the teacher of record is working remotely from home, that person is logging in from home. So Thomas, all assignments, whether you're in person or online, are going to be online. That's very important because we have to plan for a possible, right? We don't know if schools have to close for a certain time period. Schools have to close indefinitely. We do not want to have to uproot everyone so we're going to have the systems in place where we can stop in person at the drop of a dime or continue in person so all everything is available online the assignments that are posted online our in-person students and in-person faculty will be supporting everything that's posted online Jocelyn is asking, when will the students know what their schedules will be? So it is available in Pupil Path Scheduler now. I know our new families don't know what that is, but we're going to set you up with that in a moment. I'll give you that information in a moment. So uh, I, I don't want to mess up your name. I apologize. Agadis Abdel Gisa Rosa is asking, my son's pupil path account still shows his middle school information. So again, yes, we are going, you have to get an invite letter from Ms. Rena, but I'm gonna go through that in a, in, a, in a moment. Kayla, I understand you have the same issue, yep. And Thomas, I hear you. Um, I, I'm not sure what you mean by being bombarded, but again, we do have um, flexibility with Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays our first 25 minutes of each class period, you have to check in, you have to attend those classes mandatorily. But on Tuesdays and Thursdays is the flexibility. You have that flexibility to learn at your own play pace, log in when you are available. But we are encouraging everyone to maintain a Monday through Friday, same schedule so that you're not thrown off. So here's a question, right? So if I want to switch, right? So if I'm in person, so I'm coming into the school building. You may elect to go remote online at any time throughout the school year. Once again, if you are a student who's coming into the building, you can elect to stop coming into the building and go remote at any time. However, those of us who are starting remote, right, you cannot. 
You cannot just say, I want to I wanna go from being online to now come into the school building. You must wait until open enrollment periods to switch to in-person learning, again, because health and safety are top priority. The school needs time to ensure that the number of students that we have in person will make sure that everyone can social distance and everyone can be safe in the environment. We will have specific dates by which those who are online can switch to in-person learning four times a year. Those specific dates have not been released by Central yet, but the first opportunity to switch is in November. So once again, if I'm in person and let's say I'm not comfortable with, with you know, uh, coming into the school building, maybe my commute, I'm just not comfortable with some things. All right, I'm just going to elect to do remote. And again, because you can switch at any time and all the content is online anyway, you're welcome to switch at any time. But if you are remote, if you are learning online from day one, you have to wait for defined opt-in periods to come into the building because again, we have to make sure that the numbers match and we can safely accommodate all the students who wish to be in person. And so if you'd like to, if you are a family who has elected to uh, be in person and you'd like to change that, then here's the link to do so. And the DOE, Central DOE, is holding its last citywide family and community engagement learning session at 6.30 on August 27th. Pre-registration is required and the link is there. Again, after this presentation, I am emailing everything I've shared, the video, the links, everything is there. So don't worry about having a copy it down. You're going to get it very shortly after this presentation. But again, if for any reason you want to switch to online, you can do that at any time and that link is still there. I'm gonna stop for a moment just to check on the chat. So Jonathan, it sounds like you're one of our new students and you will have access to your schedule, schedule either through the New York Schools account or scheduler. And his question was, I apologize, will you guys make a copy of the schedule and give it to us so we know what class we have next? You will have that digitally, Jonathan. Mr. Goodson said, I apologize. Rhonda is asking, can the parents see the schedule? Absolutely. When you set up that New York City Schools account, you can see their schedule, their grades, their attendance, everything. So Erica, if you are an in-person is, is saying that I prefer a printed schedule if possible. So if you are an in-person uh, student, then when school opens, then yes, we can print a schedule for you. Um, but we want to go paperless because of we're a tech school one and because of the current conditions around COVID-19. So Ms. B is asking, what if the student wanted to do remote but is not getting the material and feels in-person is best? Do the student have to suffer until they can opt into person learning? So Ms. B, none of our students are going to suffer, I assure you with that. Um, again, our teachers and faculty are very flexible, so I assure you that even if the student is online, no one is going to suffer. Our faculty takes the time to spend one-on-one -on -one time if necessary with our students so that they can feel comfortable with online. And again, because safety is of utmost importance, they do have to wait until that first opt-in period, which is November, again, to ensure safety. So they're not suffering. Again, we are here. You let us know what the issues are, and we will act accordingly. We will respond and support our students. So you don't have to worry. Suffering is not a, a word that we use at Chelsea. We don't suffer. Again, like I said, we're in this together, and we're going to make it work. So with instruction, instruction for all students will focus on the key elements below. So as many of us know, relationships are key. And our students and faculty work hard so that we have reciprocal 
relationships. Students just don't learn as well if they don't have a wonderful relationship with their teacher. And so I strongly, strongly encourage that. I strongly, strongly push that. My teaching faculty and staff knows I'm all about relationships. And as I hope many of you have felt thus far, I'm about relationships with our families as well. This is a reciprocal thing. We cannot do teaching and learning without our families being on board and vice versa. So relationships are key. We're going to be integrating the academic learning content into social emotional learning. Again, we know this is a traumatic time for all of us, and so we're not going to ignore that, hence why we are starting September with an interdisciplinary project that's not overwhelming, it does encompass all subject areas, and it provides those spaces for the social emotional aspects providing spaces for students to speak about their feelings or not speak about their feelings, providing students with the supports to get acclimated to our online learning platforms. We are not throwing everyone into the mix and having them get acclimated right on their own. We have built in time throughout the month of September to slowly acclimate our entire community into everything that we're doing. We will also be having grade level school-wide expectations. So there are certain markers within each grade level that we want students to accomplish. So whether that be their certifications, whether that be their regents exams, that will clearly be spelled out and shared in the fall, as well as posted on our website. The, the items are done, they're just being finalized now, but we're going to share that. And it just makes the expectations of learning very clear and simple to our students and our families. I did open with saying this is our year of transformation. And so you're gonna notice a lot of things that make teaching and learning easier and more accessible, as well as the systems and protocols so that we all have a greater understanding of what's happening at Chelsea CTE. Career readiness and CTE, career and technical education, are at the forefront. It is the reason why our students chose our school. So we are preparing our students for immediately after graduation, they can go directly into career, right, or college. And so that will continue to be at the forefront. And again, as connected to relationships, community building and restorative circles are paramount. So what are the blended learning expectations for our in-person students? Masks are required at all times. If a student cannot do that, then I would suggest that you select full-time remote learning if that poses a challenge. We will certainly have a designated room for brief mask breaks, uh, no more than two daily, so that students can get that break in isolation. But again, if you cannot have a face covering at all times, then maybe remote learning is that choice for you for now. Again, we're gonna have a maximum of nine students per class. Upon entry into the building, students immediately report to their assigned classrooms. There is no hanging out in the cafeteria or the gymatorium, there's none of that. We have to, health and safety is first and foremost. Students do remain in one classroom for the duration of the day. Subject teachers will be rotating in and out. And as I've shared earlier, breakfast and lunch will be served in the classroom and will be a lunch and learn. And of course, everyone has to follow all safety directional signs located within the building for safe social distancing measures. So our students have to get acclimated to going in one direction. Maybe the way you, the route you've taken to go to the restroom might certainly change. So you have to follow the directions. You might have to go downstairs before going upstairs, et cetera. But again, there will be clear signage throughout the building to indicate that. Now, what are the expectations for both those students who are in person and those online? Daily attendance is required, right? We wanna make sure that all is well with you. We want you engaged in content. And so we, we mandate that you check in every day. Mandatory live sessions on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Again, we're supporting that content. And again, I said there is flexibility in the week schedule, but Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, the first 25 minutes of each class period, you are engaging in live sessions with your teachers and your classmates. But on Tuesdays and Thursdays, right, you are engaging in the content 
on your own time. I'm strongly encouraging that you still follow a school schedule, but you also have the optional live support after school day, right? On Tuesdays and Thursdays from three to five. Four year graduation. I'm sorry, I just want to make sure everyone can hear me because I'm getting a message that my internet is unstable. Can someone let me know in the chat if you can still hear me clearly? Just say yes really quick, please. Okay. We can hear you, Principal Reed. Thank you so much. All right, so Again, you will have optional online extracurricular activities Wednesday through Friday. It's important to note that extracurricular activities will only be online. So there's no after school activities in person because we have to ensure health and safety is first and foremost. The learning platforms that we will be utilizing are Google Classroom. So all course content and materials will be posted there. So that's the hub, that's the main space where learning is occurring. But our meetings, whether that's live teaching, the academic support or tutoring, meetings with other guidance counselors or the college team or IEP services, et cetera, will be taking place via Zoom. And lastly, scheduler and pupil path. As our current students know, that's where you find your schedule, your grades, your transcript, et cetera. Our new families, hold tight. You are gonna get the information to set up your scheduler and pupil path or change it from the middle school to the high school information. And so when we look at the blended learning instructional models, we're preparing our students to be 21st century leaders, innovators, orators, newsmakers, and scholars. And so the two instructional models that we're going to be utilizing, one is called the gradual release of responsibility. The second is called flipped classroom. When we talk about gradual release of responsibility, that's where the teacher is slowly but surely letting go and allowing students to take the lead. Right. And so when we talk about career readiness in all of our careers, right, we have a lot of tasks that we have to do independently. And we have to have the wherewithal and the fortitude to be able to manage our time, look up content and engage accordingly. So what does this look like? It is whole class instruction and practice that's not going away. Formative assessments are when teachers check in with students. They check for understanding to make sure that students understood what the teacher taught them. Purposeful group structure. So as we know, in most of our jobs, we have to work in groups, we have to work on teams. And so based on whether or not a student understood content or not, the formative assessment is going to inform that teacher's placement of students in groups. That's why they're purposeful. And sometime a teacher will be in that group to support maybe our students with disabilities, our students with IEPs, our English language learners, et cetera. Then of course we have the collaborative where students work together, right? You might be working together on a project. You might be working together in a study group to understand some content. And you have individual learning where you're grappling with content on your own. As we know, the best way to learn something is to kind of grapple with it a little bit and, and, and identify our, our misunderstandings and then come back, right, in those support sessions to get the answers. We may do that with a teacher or in one of those collaborative groups that I discussed just a moment ago. Second to that is the flipped classroom. And this model is what we actually have to do in this remote learning environment, right? So we're going from a traditional in-classroom space and we're putting it online. But again, we are preparing our students to be 21st century lions and they have to become more independent and self-advocate. If there's something that they need, something that they don't understand, we are providing them with the skills and tools to be able to speak up for themselves and not be shy about it, not be worried about any potential consequences. So the flipped classrooms allows our students to 
One, do independent learning at home. So you're going to get a video by teachers on that Tuesday and Thursday that prepares you for some content. And then again, on those Tuesday, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, you're doing the in-class and online formative questions, right? Where formative means we're looking to inform our instruction. We're looking to ensure that our students understood what we want them to understand. And we're following up if they have not. We're also providing, again, those purposeful group instructions. You see that both in gradual release as well as the flipped classroom. And then exit tickets. That lets a teacher know, okay, my last formative assessment, did the students actually, after I followed up with them, after they engaged in some online content, after they engaged with each other, did they actually learn the content? And so what does this gradual release of responsibility for career readiness look like? So it's one focused instruction. The teacher does the instructing on that Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and live sessions. Then you have guided instruction where we do it together. So I'm teaching you something, and now I want us all to practice so that I ensure that you got what I want you to learn. The third step is collaborative learning, where again, the teachers provide those purposeful grouping structures. They place students in groups based on understanding of material and students actually do the work together. And then we have the last piece, which is independent learning, where I make sure that I actually understand it myself alone. And that cycle just repeats itself. And then the teacher will again assess whether the student understood that content. And when I say assess, that means determine whether or not the student actually got the learning objective, got the learning content, got the material that we needed them to understand. And here's a visual of what I just said. So teachers and students each have two parts of this puzzle. Teachers are doing the focused instruction and the guided instruction. Students are collaboratively learning and learning independently. This graphic does not include the we do for students, but students have a little bit of extra responsibility here because when the teacher is giving that guided instruction, then the students also have to be engaged with that because they have to know, okay, did I actually learn the content? Do I understand the content? And so students actually have a third lever over here that's not exactly represented in this model. So flip classroom, just to dig a little bit deeper, this is the independence piece and self-advocacy, right? So students are engaging in the content alone, right? So they have that asynchronous learning videos and resources at home. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, they're logging in. Teachers are going to make learning videos for students to review, or they're gonna have reference material videos based on content for students to review. Then students are going to engage in a task in Google Classroom, and that's usually through Google Classroom question stems, right? And that will inform grouping. So if a student got it, wonderful. That student is in a group that got it, and they could perhaps move forward or help some of their other student colleagues, classmates, right? So those collaborative groups are formed. And then the whole class exit ticket, again, to allow the teacher to see, okay, did everyone get the content that we just taught over this time period. A visual representation. So there's some video at home, again on that Tuesday or Thursday, where they're looking at the content, they got it, okay, now I go in and I engage with Google Classroom to answer the questions. I may write some questions down. And then when I come back on a Wednesday or a Friday, the teacher comes in to guide me with the live Zoom classrooms to again assess or check for my understanding of that content. And then I'm leaving with an exit ticket, right? And that exit ticket doesn't have to be something that's live. It could be where the student has to answer a question in Google Classroom. And so the student, the teacher would know, okay, each student got this content or okay, the majority of the students did not. Let me take time to review this material again. Let's start all over. So this is a big graphic of this process, both processes in two. It's a four step process really quickly. So the I do piece is asynchronously at home, right? First step, student independently at home. The new content is provided to students at home via video lessons using some method of Screencastify, which is just a tool where 
like I'm speaking to all of you now and I'm giving you a visual. So teachers will be doing something very similar where they're providing students with step-by-step -step instruction on some content or they're providing a resource video where it's teaching the same content, it might not be that subject teacher. The second step in this process is we do, right? So this is teachers and students via Zoom on the Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So the teacher provides that guided practice during a lesson. They're asking questions, they're giving tasks, they're trying to find out if students understood that. And you have two wings to this second step, right? Those blue formative assessment boxes. So they're gonna choose whether or not they're gonna have students uh, understand or find out if students understood that content via discussion prompts. So students are going to do turn and talk, so they're going to do a think pair share, where students have an opportunity to actually verbalize or speak their findings from the video lessons they watched the night before. They may be confused, they may have understood it, and that collaborative discussion helps further the learning or, or further the understanding. Another way teachers might use formative assessment is online tools. So you see Zoom whiteboards. So again, similar to when we're in the classroom, teachers will have Zoom whiteboards where they're actually stepping students through a process or a content understanding, an essay, whatever the task is. Zoom polls, that's something that you can use to kind of poll the class to see where are you at, where are your content misunderstandings, where did you um, make progress in this particular um, item. You have Google Forms, Kahoot, which many of our students know and love, Quizzes, and Padlet. These are all tools that our students, current students were familiarized with. And again, all of our new families, we have some ninth, mostly ninth graders, we have some 10th grade new families, do not worry. Again, that month of September with that interdisciplinary learning project is going to allow students time to engage with all the tools that we're talking about thoughtfully throughout that month. So they are very, very comfortable when we start in October with some of the more content individualized learning aspects. The third step in this process is the you do. Again, that's synchronous, right? That's on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We are engaging in a task, study groups, purposeful groupings. We have those entry points so we know not all students learn at the same pace, not all students learn the same way. Some students may need additional time. Some students may need to have it, it taught again and in different methods. We understand learning styles. So whether you're a visual learner, a kinesthetic learner where you have to move around or you like to read and verbalize, we are going to um, utilize all of those tools to meet our students where they are. And lastly, the you do independently. Again, on those Tuesdays and Thursdays, for the asynchronous learning, students are engaging in tasks, whether that's an exit ticket, they're self-assessing, so they're actually doing something where, okay, I have an exemplar, and did I really understand this? Does my work look like the work that my teacher is showing me? Oh man, no, it's not, why not? Let me try to figure that out. Again, so we're talking about career and college readiness, and our students have to have those tools independently to determine whether or not they understand something, whether or not they need to seek additional support and help, and so these two learning tools are going to cultivate that throughout their high school career with us. Q&A around instruction. Ms. Jiggis, you're doing a phenomenal job with the chat. Thank you. Thank you everyone for your wonderful questions. Very thoughtful. We're almost to the finish line, folks. I know this was a lot. And so again, I keep alluding to this year of transformation and our grade levels rock. Many of you, many of our current families and welcome to our new families again, but many of our new families shared how much they appreciated the outreach, the supports and everything that our teams, our teacher teams have done throughout March and June. And we're going to continue in that success. So social emotional learning and needs are paramount that, that goes into the relationships, that goes into trauma informed teaching and learning, that goes into everything that we need to do right now in this current time. That requires our faculty and staff to collaborate more now so than ever. And they've been doing that and we will continue that because it has worked and it worked well. Again, as I said, we're starting with that interdisciplinary project so that we ease students into everything that I've talked about already. We'll have one in September and we'll have another one in the spring semester. As I spoke to earlier, 
9, 10, 11th, and 12th grade will have grade level career readiness expectations. So what is it that a ninth grader is expected to do, for example? Yes, pass all of your classes. Yes, pass three regions exams. Yes, get the first certification in your CTE class. Yes, try to look for volunteer opportunities. So all of these things will be spelled out by grade level so that you know by the end of your four years, okay, I have this, this many certifications, I'm ready for this career if I choose, I'm ready to go to this college if I choose, you have options. We are all about affording our students and their families options after graduation. We're going to have regular celebrations to cultivate friendly academic competition and camaraderie. And that competition is between students as well as our faculty and staff. It's always good for us to be on the same page when we shoot for our team level work. And of course, the biggest piece here, we are a community, we work both hand in hand. So family engagement is paramount. Uh, it, it shows today, Ms. Jiggets, Ms. Maxwell, many of you know, and you know Ms. Jiggets as well. She's on vacation, but Ms. Jiggets came right in. Okay, let me jump in with you, Principal Reed. And I really, really appreciate that. So our family engagement support and outreach is built right in. So of course, we need to have goals. Right, so our current rising seniors, our four year graduation goal is 90 or better, 90% or better, of course. Our rising juniors, we want at least 94% of them to graduate on time. And again, we want all of our students to graduate on time, but we have to have goals and levels and benchmarks to look at. Our rising sophomores, 100%. This was a five year process in terms of the vision for Chelsea CTE. And of course, our new families who are coming with us this year, all 100% of you will graduate in four years. And so again, with the friendly competition and the academic supports around each grade, we want to ensure that our students have input to name their grade, right? So we want to have those grade level themes. For example, the resilient seniors. That's just something that we can look at for this fall, but we want to get that student input so that we have friendly competition, we get student input, and we make it fun because we're all striving for the best, striving to be the best we can and striving for that ultimate success on a grade level team. And so this is a preview for our families to know who is on the ninth grade team. So you'll see on the ninth grade team, you have uh, Mr. Clark, Mr. Garcia, Ms. Jefferson, Mr. Khan, Ms. Ladada, Ms. Mack, Ms. Mohan, Mr. Ovayez, Assistant Principal Perez, Ms. Renna, Ms. Smith, and the guidance counselor, Ms. Lawrence, and the social worker, Mr. Jones. They both toggle between ninth and, grade, ninth and 10th grade. They support both. And then of course, we're gonna have family engagement team members in each grade. 10th grade, same thing. So you have all the teachers and staff who are in that group and they're supported. You have assistant principal Dixon in the 10th grade as well, Mr. Cordellano, Ms. Donnellan, Ms. Ebo, Mr. Gendell, Ms. Grimes, Ms. Martin, Ms. Mateo, Ms. Robinson, Ms. Scott, Ms. Tavares, Ms. Velez, Ms. Yagabi, and Lawrence and Mr. Jones as well. And then we have our upper team grades, right? So uh, Ms. Kim, our music teacher, Mr. Perroth, Mr. Silverfeld, Ms. Schuler, Ms. Thomas, Ms. Wu, myself, and Mr. Siegel. In 12th grade, Mr. Rodriguez, Ms. Campos, Ms. Savasio, Ms. Davis, Ms. Foote, Mr. Fowler, Mr. Moore, Mr. Rosamondo, Mr. Tebbit, myself, and Mr. Siegel as well. So we have our grade team structures in place. We want our families to know who is on the grade so that if you have any questions, concerns, or what have you, we are all doing this together. We're working together as one. Q&A on the grade levels. So excellent question, Ms. B. So Summer Bridge is very important. It's, it's going to kind of uh, advance our students and acclimate them before we get into September with uh, learning and, and interacting with their ninth grade teachers, as well as learning about um, different protocols that we have and welcome them into the Chelsea CTE family. So we're gonna give them access to their accounts. We're going to make sure that their email is all set up. We're gonna give them time to see and interact with one another. So it's very important at the Summer Bridge, if they can make it, they should make that Summer Bridge. This way students get comfortable, our new students, into our community in a virtual fashion. 
you're very welcome, Adagisa Rosa, for keeping you informed. That's what we're here for. So Shinda is asking about the Freshman Bridge. So we, we, we call it Freshman Bridge, and I apologize for that because I do understand we have some 10th grade new families. And so we have 10th grade families who are new to the building. Please, yes, absolutely, you can partake in that uh, Summer Bridge program. So you should have gotten an email from Ms. Renner yesterday. If not, email me and we will get that out to you. Tracy Rodriguez is asking, will the juniors still take their SATs this coming year? So as of today, no guidance has been set around canceling SLT, SATs. SATs were given last semester. They were truncated, so they were uh, a lesser exam and they were online. So as of today, yes, that is still scheduled, but if anything changes, we're gonna keep you updated. Excellent question, Ms. Rodriguez. Are parents going to have Zoom meetings to keep up with our children's progress? So one of the ways in which we keep you posted on your child's progress is through the use of uh, IO Classroom Scheduler, as well as the New York City Schools accounts. When we finish this meeting, I'm asking parents to complete a survey, and you're going to inform me what times in the afternoon or evening work best for you. So when our students, the reason why we have the grade team structures if any of our students are struggling or having some kind of a challenge, we reach out to our parents. We do not keep you in the dark. We are about all of our students' success. You saw the goals, so no one is left behind. So you, no worries around that. Tracy Rodriguez, I don't have the dates on the top of my head, but if you go to collegeboard.org, you can see, but uh, universal, uh, what is it, SAT school day usually happens in March. But again, that will be posted on our website. This is, is no time in the fall for the school, but if they want to take the, yes, college, thank you, Ms. Chickens. If they want to take the SAT um, on their own, then they can do that. And we do have fee waivers available. Mr. Marr is our college advisor, but you can check out our website and see some information there. Yes, Shamel is asking what program will be used to monitor a view child's grades and assignments. Yes, so pupil path will be used as well as the New York City Schools account. Same thing for the SAT, Ms. Farrell, good to see you. Hope Kenneth is well, same thing, same thing about the uh, ACT. So regions exams, excellent question. Uh, what about regions exams? So last year, the state ed department um, kind of canceled the regions exams and provided waivers. This year, there's two schools of thought so far. There is no defined um, decision made yet. However, we're looking at a truncated possible region exam if they're going to have the regions and it will be shortened and it will be available online or they're just gonna uh, give the waivers again. The students have to pass the course sequence for that region's exam, and they'll either be waived or a truncated version of that exam. As soon as we have that information, though, we're gonna post that to our website and give it in. Ms. B is asking, can we have Zoom meetings like this about how the learning blended remote is going? So we're going to have family engagement forms around feedback, definitely, on a regular basis. So don't worry about that. Yes, we will. Kayla's asking if an, an incoming ninth grader already completed a regions, would they be bumped up to the next class or how that work in person? Excellent question, Kayla. So yes, if you're coming in, a lot of students come in with either the algebra, the living environment, uh, or the U.S. history region. So when you come into high school with that region's exam, then yes, you are bumped up. You do not have to take those courses again, and you get those course credits. So if, for example, a ninth grader comes in with the algebra, they would not take the algebra uh, math classes. They would start in geometry. I don't know what's happening with the screen. Just give me one moment. I'm going to stop sharing for one quick moment and do it again. I don't know what happened with the screen. 
Okay, so let's move forward. So it's important that all of our families have your New York City DOE student and schools accounts, right? The student accounts for DOE are gonna allow students to have their DOE email address so that you can gain secure entry into Zoom. This is a requirement and you can do that on your own. And again, that link will be provided in the email that I sent immediately following this presentation. The New York City DOE schools accounts allow me to apologize to our families. I know the last meeting we had, I encouraged all of you to sign up for your schools accounts. And a lot of you emailed me saying, oh, I don't have an account creation code, I apologize. So I was mistaken, you definitely need that account creation code. Uh, Ms. Maxwell, Ms. Jacobs, and Ms. Livingston have been reaching out. But as uh, many of you know, Ms. Maxwell lives on vacation. So you can also email Ms. Jacobs or Ms. Livingston now if you wanted your code and their email addresses are coming right up. But they have been calling. And so many of you received those calls. So that's going to take a little bit of time. But if you're ready to do that now, shoot them a quick email. They'll reach out to you to set you right up. This is what the image looks like for the student accounts. And this is something you do not need the uh, account code for. You just need the OSIS number, the nine digit student ID number and date of birth of the student. And then the school's accounts. So when you go here to create the account, it'll step you through, ask you some identifying questions, name, ID number, et cetera, date of birth. And then it is going to ask for the school account creation code and that family engagement team will be giving you those codes. It is a tedious process. I do apologize for that. There's no quick way for us to be able to give everyone their codes individually. It has to be a one-on-one -on -one transaction. And this year of transformation, so we did just roll out our brand new website. So please check it regularly for updates and the latest information and news. Uh, this video, for example, will be posted there as well. Our COVID-19 blended learning tab will also be populated with a lot of the information we shared here, as well as resources for our family so that you get a better understanding. And if you have any questions or concerns, we're always available to support whatever your needs are. And this is just a visual graphic of the tab I'm talking about. For our new families, if you haven't already, you can look at the virtual open house that's directly below that blended learning COVID-19 tab. That is going to be populated by the end of this month. It is just, it is not populated as yet, but all the information is being worked on now. Most of it you've heard today, it just has to be transformed into the website. So that is, that process is happening now. And finally, as we draw to a close, so what are your next steps as students and family members in order for us all to start right this fall? So many of our current families know we finished strong last year. We had resounding success across all grades. Our students were resilient, our families were resilient, and we're still gonna be here to ensure that we continue to be resilient and start right. The first thing I always wanna hear from you, so please complete the feedback survey for any additional thoughts or concerns. Maybe after you view this video, something may pop up. Take a minute to put that in your form. You can submit it a number of times. And also we're surveying our families around technology needs. If you don't have access to a desktop computer, a laptop or, or a, um, is it the, uh, a tablet, I apologize. We wanna know about that as well as Wi-Fi. It is also important to note that if you've already been issued a DOE device, we're not gonna be able to reissue one, but if there is a problem with your current device, we can work around that. So in that survey, please let us know that. For our current families, you should have been receiving um, regular reminder emails about your OPERU account. Some of you may say, what is OPERU? So they changed their name from Care Monkey to OPERU. So again, please set up those accounts. That is our online digital forms process. So the emergency contact cards, the uh, lunch forms, all the forms that we have as a school are being digitized and they're being utilized in this secure system. It was formerly known as Care Monkey. It is now Operu. Our new families, you would not have received your email. They are coming out within the next 24 to 48 hours. We just synced the um, material yesterday. It does take 24 to 48 hours, but you should be getting reminder emails soon. So our new families, whether you're a new ninth grader or a new 10th grader, those emails are coming shortly. So please ch check your junk email just in case for the Operu administrator email. 
we want you to create your NYC DOE student account. Again, that's for the DOE email address so that you can gain access to Zoom. Many of you have done that already, so perfect. Uh, especially coming from middle school, they were using Zoom. So if you have that already, wonderful. If not, please do that as soon as possible. Again, create that New York City Schools account. Like I said, Ms. Jiggis and Ms. Livingston, who is on the family engagement team. Ms. Jiggis wears many hats, again. Uh, thank you, Ms. Jiggis. But their email addresses are there if you want to kind of email them now and you're ready to set up your account. They can shoot you a quick email back with your account creation code and go from there. But Ms. Jiggis is working with our families with last names ending in A through K, and Ms. Livingston is working with our families from L through Z. We also want you to set up and check your schedule of pupil path accounts. Again, our current families know the system, you have it already. If not, make sure you get that going. Again, to the freshman bridge question, you can set it up during Freshman Bridge, which will happen uh, September 2nd or 3rd. And I apologize, I keep calling it Freshman Bridge, but again, to our 10th grade new families, uh, the few of you that are with us, you are also welcome to come, come on in. It is not exclusive to ninth graders. This is about acclimating any new member of our Chelsea CT, CTE community to the team as a whole. Ms. Rena did email that out yesterday. If for any reason you did not get that email, her email address is listed here, lrenna at Chelsea HS, and she will provide you with your account setup information. And that's the link to Pupil Path. But again, all email addresses, all of the information for Pupil Path and the links are in that email that I will be sending shortly. And again, the, again, new students attend the Freshman Bridge on September 2nd and the 3rd. The next announcement is one that is very hard for me to share with you, but I am all about transparency. And again, I'm talking about our community and our engagement and our relationship. And so the entire leadership team, myself as principal, and both assistant principals, Ms. Perez and Ms. Dixon, will be working from home this fall. We will continue to manage the day-to-day -day operations of our building. It's just that we're going to be remote. There will be a district site supervisor, someone who has the same license and someone who has the same credentialing as I do or as the APs do in order to support the on-site needs of our community. But we will be working very closely with that person, myself as your principal, as well as the assistant principals. But we will not be in the building this fall at all, but there will be an on-site supervisor to support all of the in-person needs throughout the fall. So now we open it up for some last questions. And I'm actually going to stop recording now and I'll take the questions. I just want to stop recording so that everyone can have access. So again, I want to thank everyone for your time. Thank you for spending time with us. I want you all to stay safe. The next update that we have will take place the week of August 31st. So I'll send that invite again as I've been doing. And we will have a Zoom meeting to provide you with the latest, greatest news on what's happening with Chelsea CTE. So again, thank you everyone and take care.